Welcome back to the channel. I'm back with some more Illustrator tips. So the first one starting off, we're looking at the live paint bucket. This is a tool that you can actually use to fill in solid pieces of artwork. You can just select the artwork you're trying to fill, use the button K and select the areas you want to fill. Now, this is an image of Bart Simpson, which is easily filled just by selecting the certain areas and just clicking on the different colors. It's a very fast way to work. Next tip is drawing straight lines in Illustrator. You can either try and use a mouse, but sometimes it still doesn't work out very well. If you press shift and draw, you can draw vertical, horizontal, and even diagonal lines. The diagonal lines are at 45 degree, so it's really easy to just set up grids if you're trying to just do something temporarily. Right, this is a trick called the tilde trick or the at key trick. What you're doing is you're drawing a shape, but as you're drawing, you're also pressing the tilde or the at sign um, this will create a sort of flower effect uh, this is when you turn on the strokes you can see all these different paths are drawn as you can see it's quite dense but if you try with something else maybe like a star or a hexagon i'll just try this star oops you've got to make sure you actually hit the at key or the tilde key at the same time And if you drag and rotate, it can spin. Uh, you just need to make sure you let go of the mouse button before you let go of the at key. Depending on how fast you rotate, it will be depending on the outcome you get. So it takes a few tries to get it right. But then these are individual paths, so you can change the stroke and uh, the fill colors. Oops, maybe too much. So as you can see, it looks like quite a cool little flower design. Uh, this is a simple one, selecting things on the artboard. So if you press Control A, it selects everything on the entire canvas. But if you press Control Alt A, it selects just what's on one artboard at a time. So it just goes to your most active or the most recently active artboard. Within the text tool, there's the touch text tool, uh, which allows you to edit individual letters, but keeping them live, meaning you can change them. So you are able to scale, rotate, and move placements. You can just play with the shapes individually and just make something interesting. With Inside Illustrator, you can use this transformation effect to create something quite cool. If you just drop in a shape which has a gradient on it, you can use this as a base to create copies and create quite interesting compositions. So once you have a gradient you like, if you select the object and then go to Transform, you are able to insert a number of copies and actually play with the scale, the rotation and the move length. So as you can see, just playing with some values, you can either get like straight lines or if you add a curve or a rotation, you are able to create quite interesting shapes like these sort of circles. The more copies you add, the more the shape changes. But with the scaling, you are able to actually create sort of zooming in compositions. So let's try and make something kind of cool. So the idea is to create something that starts off small and then sort of wraps around and spirals out to be quite big. And it's all about just playing with the actual values and seeing what works well. So we've got this sort of like shrimp design and then just increasing the number of copies, it creates the full shape. And where this is a gradient on a active vector, we are able to actually just change the color. So we can either go for a solid color, which just makes it look matte, or we can add another gradient. While you can use transform on a single shape, you are actually able to add effects to an individual layer. So if you select the layer and using the appearance settings, uh, you can add an individual effect. So for instance, we're going to use the same transform as previously, but this time we're going to be adding reflections and adding a single copy. This will allow us to draw and whatever we draw is reflected exactly parallel. So as you can see, this works quite well for lines. It's can be quite picky to get used to at first, but once you have an idea, you can actually use it to draw logos quite easily. It doesn't just stop there. We can change it completely by adding more copies and even changing the rotation factor to create these sort of spirograph shapes. So this one, maybe we need more. Yeah, we definitely need more. So if we add more copies and if we change the, oh no, we should be okay. There we go. We can create these spirograph kind of shapes. It's all about playing with this. 
So you can draw these with just straight lines or you can even use the line tool and um, try and play with that way. Uh, line tool creates more geometric shapes, whereas if you're using the curve or um, the pen tool, you can create more gradual shapes. So we've got the scallop, which is a tool that pulls in vector lines and creates this sort of distorted effect. So as you can see, it pulls in the vectors and to a central point. So if we just color in this illustration, it sort of makes it look quite distorted and from a different way. If we grab the wrinkle, it actually sort of pushes elements out from the center. So if we just click on certain areas, we can sort of distort the illustration outwards. Lastly, we have the crystallize. This is my favorite as it creates this sort of glitch effect. So if you select the illustration, you can actually draw over it and it creates this sort of distorted, almost glitch effect look to anything. Sometimes you might have to actually select the artwork. Um, sometimes it just doesn't want to work for you, but the more you draw over, the more distorted it gets. Lastly, we're on the whip tool. So the whip tool is essentially a tool that allows you to play with the a strokes width. So let's just quickly add a transform tool so we can create a sort of mandala. So if we select the left anchor point and change the copies to 11, and if we do the degrees divided by the number, it actually does the math for us. So let's quickly see this. Yeah, that looks about right. Let's just double check. Yep. Then if you click okay, then now select the width tool. you are able to select on a point and actually scale it in. So we can keep doing this again and again and create these quite interesting patterns. So depending on what your idea you have, you can just keep repeating and playing with this design. So the idea is the more complicated it looks, the more in sort of unique it becomes. Sort of like a snowflake generator. If you found this useful, uh, please like and subscribe. It helps grow the channel. Thank you.